Yeah, glad to have you back here in the next project. And the first thing we now do is again, we start a new project inside of Houdini. So let's go to File, go to New Project. And in this dialog now, we are looking for a new folder and a new name of the project. So let's first name it, mm, let's take Coffee. And then we search for a path where we want to place the project. Normally I have all my Houdini projects here under home, but for this case here, I place this project in this new folder here, Houdini projects, because I want to give you later the chance to get this project on Gumroad for a small fee so that you can follow everything along if you need my files. And now I have my path here and then we click accept and sometimes you see you can't leave this dialog because you only have set here this path here. Little trick I found is enter something here under file, click accept and then remove what you've entered. So I click here into that, I press the end key and remove the A again. So now the path is done. Then you see I normally add some custom folders here. It's a little bit annoying that it jumps around here. You see I have a custom folder which is named ref where you want to place the reference images later. And then I also have another custom folder from Houdini which I use if I export files from Houdini to for example 3D Code or ZBrush or Substance Painter. I want to have these files in a from Houdini folder. So let's click accept. And you see now that our job variable here is set. It's written here in the status line. And now we can save this file for the first time. So Command S. And make sure that the path here is now relative. You see we have an absolute path here. And this will make problems later. So always keep in mind we want to have relative paths so that we later can transport projects. So I select first here the dollar $job on the left side. And you see we start now with this dollar job variable here and then we see all our subfolders because now we reference to the dollar job variable which holds our active project. So that's exactly what we want. We say now okay. The first step is the coffee cup. So I make coffee cup 01 here to make sure that on every system it works without problems, spaces are not the best idea. So make underscores here, we accept. And now we can start with that. Great. The next step is looking for references. And I made a little bit of effort here to bring my head around what I want. And I made you a small PNG of that. So let's switch here to my desktop. And I go here into my coffee explosion. And you see here is a PNG and if I press here the space bar on the Mac, you see these are my ideas I have. And you see, I like the composition of an image like that. I have a coffee cup here and some beans lying around. So this will be a part of this project to make a pile of beans. But I also wanted to see how the coffee cup itself looks. So this is the coffee cup here, it's paper. You see here we have a lip because it's folded here. Then we see these caps here. You see there are different forms of these caps. What I like is this cap here, but I think a cool feature would be to have an indention like here. So I take this here as an example and make a little indention here. Maybe also a form like this here could be cool. We will see while we are modeling. One thing I want to do in my Houdini practice hours is also to talk a little bit about tools and how you do something. And a little tool I want to present you here in this lesson after I've placed now this PNG here in our new project under reference so that you later find it in your Gumroad files. So there it is, is Purev. I want to show you this little application I use. So this is Purev. It's a very cheap software. I've bought it for some dollars and I use it all the time. So I want to show it to you. If you start Pura for the first time, you have this little window here and you move this little window with the right mouse button. So you can place it everywhere and it floats over everything. You can resize it here at the corners so I can fit it exactly like I want to have it. If you want to know now how this application works, there are two ways. You can press Ctrl H here for the help 
So you get a small help, a key binder and so on. Or you can use here the menu. So if you go here to the menu, you see there are different modes and windows. And uh, the thing here is the canvas. So you see you can change the canvas. Then we place images on it and the images can be selected, arranged, aligned and so on. And everything here has a keyboard shortcut. And so it's uh, really keyboard shortcut driven. To find out about the keyboard shortcuts, you can go here to the preferences. And here is the key bindings. And you see we have three categories of all these key bindings. And this is something you can read by yourself. So I want only to show you how I work with that. So I go to the menu, go to load and under load recent, I can load here, for example, coffee. This was the board I've made here. And if you want to move your canvas, you can use the middle mouse button here. So I move all the images to the side. And remember, if you want to move this area or the application window, you use the right mouse button. And the reason why I like this application so much is if I scroll out now here, take this image here and I drag it somewhere here, you see the canvas increases its size all the time. So you have no limitation where you place something. And so you can really be creative, place everywhere your stuff. You can press Command N for notes. So you can say, these are my cups. And I place it here and then I move it to the side. Command N and we say, okay, I need a little bit of stuff about beans. And I place it here and you see, you never come to a border. That's the cool thing. Another thing which is cool is you can select an image and press the space bar to zoom it in and out. You see, this works also. You also can navigate in the images by the arrows right and left. You see, you can move through them and present them to a colleague, for example. Yeah, and how to get now these images into that. So let's go here to a browser, for example, Safari. So I go here to the right window. Here it is. I place them side by side here and let's Google something. So for example, we search for coffee beans. Enter. Okay, double E would help. Then we go here to images. And now I have all these crazy cool images about coffee beans. And I like, for example, this one here. And what you can do now is I use my middle mouse button to move this to the side. I go over an image. I hold on my left mouse button. And then I drag and that's it. Now the image is in the original size here and you can zoom it in and out by the space bar. I delete it again by pressing the backspace. And if you go now here and press your mouse button, you see the original size and you also can place it in the original size, which makes more sense. Cool thing is all the images which you drag over are placed inside of the Pure file later. So you can drag it somewhere else. You can give it to a colleague and I have it on my shared drive. So I have it everywhere. And yeah, this is the way I work normally here for getting some reference images. So now I have some here. Let's take these here also and so on. And what you also can do is you can make screenshots. I'm a Mac user, so I'm not so firm in knowing how it works on a PC. But what I can do here is I press Command Shift 4, for example, then I can drag an area here, which I'm interested in, for example, this one here. And after I made my screenshot, so I release the mouse, you will see on the right side of my screen a little pop-up window. And I can directly drag without saving the file on my desktop into PureF. So make that, I drag it over, that's it. Now I have my canvas here. What you now can do is you can arrange them, you can place them on each other. If you want to change the stack, you select an image and go with the arrow keys up and down to move it up and down here. This is possible. You also can now arrange them. And if you only want to arrange them by hand, for example, you want to have a pile like this here, then you can select the stuff here and press Command P and then you get an optimized arrangement here of this block. Same here, Command P. And if your canvas is now too big, you can press Command O and the canvas is now small and tidy. And now you can go here to menu, 
Say I want to have, for example, save, export, and then you can export all the images, selected image, or the whole scene. And if you now go here to the whole scene, you can, let's place it here, make new coffee scene. You can save it now out here as a PNG, for example. You can tell now the system how big you want to have with border or without border. You export. And then you see here is now your new PNG, which you then can send to colleagues, clients, or so on. So this is the way I work here. Now back to Houdini. Okay, here we are. And now we are ready to start to see now my images, which I want to use. I use the same way which we have done before. So let's go here to the composite view first. Then we are here in the compositing network. I can use my tab menu to make a new image network and say, these are my references. Dive into that, take a file node, and then I can load now here from my project. You remember to make the path always relative to click here first. So dollar job is first. Some people prefer dollar hip where the file is saved, works also. And it's a little bit more safe if the people forget to set their project. If they open a new project, they sometimes forget they only open the hip file. But if you go here to dollar hip, it always works because it works from the hip. But I go to the project here and then we go to reference. And here's the PNG. I load that. It takes a while. And now we have in this area our coffee cups and we can use them later. Let's leave that here, go back to the object or scene graph, go back here, save once. And now we are ready to start with modeling in the next lesson.